What up, everybody? Welcome back to the. Uh, sorry, oh, start again. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, let's talk about a show that we sort of. Would you agree with me with the word, by using this adjective, dismissing of it? I think you were high on it, correct? Was my number two show. <laughs> wow. I think I had it low. I had it yeah, low. You had it like, yeah. Somewhere around. Yeah. Brian, I've been watching this show week to week with not a lot of... Uh, excitement towards seeing it right away when I wake up. Not with the same excitement for some of the other shows. But I've watched it every week. I've tuned in. And I find myself, Brian, when I'm watching it, is like, I'm enjoying myself. This is this is a very good show brings up a lot of nostalgia for me um and it's just very well done brian what were your initial thoughts after seeing i would say the the first two um so yeah we're through we're through four right so uh, at this point is it four I think it's four, right? Yeah, I think we've seen I, four. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so Miss Marvel. So initially I had it second. I kind of downgraded it, swapped it with Moon Knight uh, right before Moon Knight came out. I think, so for you and me, I don't think this one's going to be in the top three when all said and done. Mm -hmm. But A, I agree with you. I think the show is, is it's very well done. It's very consistent. I find yes. like week to week, it's like, it's not really dropping off it's, it has an identity and it plays to it but i think for the target audience it is going to get the job done and then some i think younger audiences are responding to this show uh it's interesting the overall viewership numbers are down but i've seen stats that the like 18 to 25 bracket is the highest most watched show. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I was on vacation recently with some family members. Um, and my daughter's only seven. She likes the show. And some of her relatives that are a little bit older, you know, they did watch it pretty much first thing in the morning on Wednesday. That was something they wanted to do. And they were excited to do and they were talking about it. And they're, they're up on it. So I think this show has hit because you have a and I think Marvel found a star. I think that's, that's, that's the best yeah, yeah, place to start. Yeah, right? We talked yeah. about when Iman Vellani was cast, you know, she's a total unknown, but this is where Marvel has had success. And I think they struck gold. I think she's yeah. perfect as the yes. role. She yes. does the right blend of innocence. But like when she starts using her powers, you're like, she's believable and sort of mm -hmm. a heroic capacity. But she also seems very real in the sense of, um, and, I, and I mean, it's as a compliment toward her and toward Marvel. Like she isn't, you're not looking at a beauty pageant queen who happens to be a teenager, right? She looks yeah. like a normal kid who then yeah, exactly. To be, and I think that's important to connect with the younger audiences that it feels like, hey, that could be me yes. with the bracelet on my wrist having to deal with this. And I yeah. think the show has really played to that. And they found, as usual, they found some in this case, not as high profile, but very good supporting characters. So Matt Lintz, who's the, he's Bruno. He's like the tech whiz, the sidekick. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I never knew this. So apparently he was like the runner up to Tom Holland for Spider-Man. Yeah, And you see it, like too. when you see his mannerisms, you're like, oh, I see what they yeah, were yeah, looking yeah. at. Like they're <laughs> kind of somewhat similar. Um, so I like that. I like the simplicity of it. I do want to know where it's going because we know this connects to the Marvels, the film, ultimately. Um, but no, I think this show has been highly successful. And uh, this is one that I think for the younger audiences, they would vote quickly to have a season two. So I'm very curious to see if the overall viewership being lower precludes that happening. But no, I, I you know, this is one where like 
for you and me, I'd probably give it more like a three and a half star season thus far. But I think for the kids, they're going to be well, they're going to be four, four and a quarter, four and a half. We have spoken some time ago, Brian, about the uh, what Marvel's plans were with, with this uh, character. And I had said, I believe that with the success of Spider-Man, this was the opportunity to introduce other characters in that for that same age range. And they were gonna use the success and the popularity of Spider-Man to add to that, um, I guess, collection of favorite characters, right? Um, especially in that age bracket. So they're doing it with uh, Miss Marvel. They're doing a great job of it. I find myself watching it and I wish I could watch it with my daughter, but my daughter is away. Um, and uh, I, I really do enjoy watching the show. I, I, the action is very well done. Um, is it bothering you that her powers are different? Not really. And Brian, I gotta be honest. I can't help but feel like, and this is not happening now. I'm just saying, I feel like at one day we're going to be introduced to the Inhumans. One day. I think this is all perhaps leading up to that moment, you know, and they're just retelling the story in a different way. And this is, I believe, the beginning of that. So I agree with you. It's not bothering me. They obviously are giving you some nods to the classic powers when she uses the fist, right? Because the fist is effectively an extension, which is what Miss. But I see, I interpreted this a little bit as they want to clear the runway for Reed Richards. They don't want to have two stretchy characters. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It, it like, yeah, yeah, see, see a competition. So they went cosmic. They gave you a like, Okay, we get it. So when she punches, like it looks like her fist is extending and then she can do a little bit of that, but we don't want her stretching because Reed Richards is going to stretch in the next couple of years. That's what I think is going on. Yeah. But I also think like the payback on this show is really going to be evident when the Marvels comes out. We, you know, we've had concerns about this film because we always, I think we feel like the first one is one of the more overrated ones that Marvel's put out from a monetary standpoint. Yeah. Uh, they made a lot of money, but it wasn't a great movie. I think with what this show is doing with the younger audiences, Iman Milani is establishing that, and we've now heard, she told us herself, she's not a cameo in the Marvels. She's a real part in that movie. I think that's going to add dollars at the box office. I think the fact that she's going to be in the movie Kids She's are going to want bring to those fans with them. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I actually feel like when you assess the success of the show, it's not just how many people watch it, it's how many people watch the movie, the Marvels. And if they pick up another 100, 200 million a box because of this character in this show, it's a grand slam. And I think yeah. that's happening because like yeah. my kid likes the Captain Marvel movie, right? She's not as discerning. She likes the power. She likes the space stuff. She likes the Captain Marvel character. And now she likes this show. So I can already tell you, a year from now, she's going to be clamoring opening to weekend. go see that. Yes, see the yes, Marvel. Yes, 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 yeah. The Marvel machine. They're doing some things right. And not doing everything right, but they're, they're doing some things right. Um, anything else you want to add to this? Yeah, I want to add, which is they've stayed away from really blatantly connecting this show back to the end. But this show, unlike Moon Knight, we know has to because she's in the Marvels. Any yes. predictions or now there was one thing that somebody people noticed that in the credits, um, there's a reference to Haley Steinfeld in the credits. So far in this show, I'm not totally seeing where Kate Bishop fits into this storyline, other than she's another young Avenger. But any predictions to how they're gonna loop this back into the MCU kind of central timeline? I mean, like I me. Mean, would they go so far as to have Brie Larson be in this show in the finale for in, in some capacity? Like, I, I, it just feels like this show has to bring it around to center because we know she's going to be in the movies in a way the other shows didn't. I just haven't quite figured out based on the plot lines we have how that's going to happen. I, I'm thinking 
the connection, if Captain Marvel makes an appearance, it'll probably be in a cutscene because they I think they've been known to do that. Like with the final episode, there's an end credit scene. And this show series. has stayed away from cutscenes in the in the yeah. middle of yeah. So. Yes. So I don't know, Brian. It's, other than that, because that's the next appearance that she'll make, which makes sense to see some sort of connection to that. Don't know how it's gonna end. Um, but I'm, I'm in the camp that one of the Marvels will make an appearance in a cutscene. So the other thing I just want to say structurally, this show, I'm very curious to see how this finale goes, because we know Marvel's had finale problems, but this show has actually been heavy on action, uh, probably more so than I thought. This show's following a structure of within each episode, they build toward a set piece, which hasn't been that bad, actually. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't minded, like, the, the choreography and the fight styles with these sort of people that are pursuing the bracelet that she's supposed to send back um, home. So it kind of, to me, takes off the pressure of them having to have this gigantic fight in the finale. If they, so it kind of, I think it leaves them with the flexibility to kind of do it, do a little bit of what they want. So if they do want to connect it to the main storyline, they can do that and have it be kind of a fun finale. But I find the episodes go by really quickly for me. Like yeah, you yeah. kind of go through the exposition, you get the action set piece, you get the cliffhanger, and then we're on to the next week and we do it again. Yeah, yeah. That kid, uh, the, the one that was, um, fighting with her initially and I think they, they they they're cool now whatever the one with the veil around is the young kid um what was not the end? huh yeah is it is his name is what I think it's Aramis Knight is that what his name is the the, the kid right the, the one that's like he's kind of like an assassin right his dad his yeah, dad, yeah 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 dad, spoiler alert doesn't, doesn't yeah, do yeah, so yeah well in the one episode yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> not Cameron Cameron is from the comics, but yeah, this guy. Okay. Yeah. I can't help but see Dick Grayson and that kid. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I've seen him before. He was in uh, another show. It, it, it skips my mind. I, I was thinking about it. I, I remember where he was from. Oh, he was in Bloodlands on Netflix. Borderlands or something like that. Borderlands or whatever. So yeah, Aramis, a lot of, Aramis yeah. Knight. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that kid could be a, a Dick Grayson. But um, anyway, Miss Marvel, um, not a bad show. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the next episode again. Not terribly like, oh my God, I can't wait to see it on Wednesday, which is what? That's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to watch it and and enjoy it like I have been for the past uh, four weeks. Um, Brian, any last words before we uh, sign off? Yeah, no, just while we're just while we're while we're on this a little bit, because I had a chance to see the younger audiences kind of taking in the content. I did want to put a note in here about that. So like I said, Miss Marvel's hitting with them. Um, my daughter loved Loki, like loved the show. <laughs> she really liked so she saw Thor one. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hiddleston steals that movie, and so she definitely was like, "What, you know, what's he gonna do next?" Yeah, yeah. And then she saw him in Avengers One, and so she loved that. Her favorite character, uh, believe it or not, actually fa more favorite than all the actual Avengers. She likes Loki the best. So then I told her there was this Loki show, and in the back of my mind, I was like, I wasn't even thinking she'd want to see that because it's kind of not a lot of action. It's that exposition talk, of the multiverse yeah, yeah. gets a little complicated. So I was like, I don't know. She's seven and a half. I don't think this is really like her show. But I said, okay, you really like Loki. There's a Loki show. So I started on the show. And, and at the same time, she's been watching some of the Avengers cartoons. So Loki mm. pops up in some of those Earth's Mightiest Heroes event. He's in that. And he's, and he's more villain villain in that. He's not yeah, really yeah. like what he is in, in, in the MCU. But she loves the show. She loved the Loki show and she got it. Like she got the concept, the timekeepers. She was onto some of the plot points. Like she picked up on like oh, the timekeepers thing was sort of a, a bait and switch. She kind of was like, yeah, they don't seem real to me. Like, and then of course that was proven to be true in the show. 
And then she had seen Kang in the cartoon. And when they get to the house at the end, and she literally was like, Kang is in there. <laughs> and I was like, why do you say that? She's like, because he's the time traveling bad guy. He has to be in there. Sure enough, episode six, she's like, is that Kang? She said, that doesn't look like the Kang that I know. And then she listened to all his talk and she's like, oh, that's the good Kang. So she's like, the bad Kang is, I'm like, that's right. That's it. Wow. So I just, that's off to Loki again, because rewatching with her, still super enjoyed the show. But it just shows you like that show was simplified to a point where like a seven year old could actually follow with a little bit of MCU experience could follow what was going on yeah, yeah. and was riveted by conversation. Now, she also loved things you would expect a kid to love. Alligator Loki fascinated by this, right? <laughs> the little shot of Throg in his yeah. in his jar, fascinated by this. She wants a whole show about this. And I'm like, yeah, that'd probably be great for kids. But, <laughs> but the bottom line, she's like, I, she said at the end, she's like, I love Loki, I love Sylvie, and I, I want to see more Kang. And I'm like, done. This show, that's all they wanted to, like, that's it. Like, it's like, I get it. And I want to see more of these characters. It just tells you how great that show is, even on a, even on a rewatch. It was really interesting for me to see. Brian, we spoke about this quite some time ago. I think even before the Loki uh, series had ended at how simple they made their explanation of this complex idea of the multiverse. Um, whether it, it was true or not, but the idea of Miss Minutes doing that whole introduction and just, it was just so well done. And, 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 and it's, I, it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. So it just, it just underscored to me, like that, that, that character has some universal appeal. Um, and then I think, like I said, Miss Marvel is a very different show, but I feel like that character is hitting in much the same way. So you're kind of seeing like, Okay, Loki, we all agree is awesome. I think some of the other shows are more targeted. Like, you know, yeah. you and I really think Moon Knight was pretty good. And you know, we thought WandaVision had its high points, but like, I'm not finding the kids were really into no discussion of WandaVision, no discussion of Falcon, didn't care about those. No discussion of What If, didn't really like the, haven't really seen that. My daughter hasn't seen that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Miss Marvel and Loki, real, real high points for the younger audience. So I thought that was, that's been interesting. And then I thought for, had a couple cousins who were more like, between 10 and 14 and their boys all over Moon Knight. Thought it was amazing. Love that show. Really love that show. So it showed you yeah. like the audience respond to different things. Yeah. 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 And Moon Knight is a wonderful show. Um, Brian, Ms. Marvel. And, and it's crazy how Loki was like a, a show that I don't think we were really high on in the beginning. The lowest rated show. You, I think you had a seven because you had She-Hulk eight and then I had She-Hulk <laughs> seven and I had Loki eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. very interesting to see like, wow, wow. Um, but anyway, uh, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. <laughs>